everyone to another episode of Saving the World podcast with Martin Resney and Luke McMichael. Today we'll be talking about conspiracies and the many different hoaxes and conspiracies out there uh, and trying to find out ways to kind of rank them or rate them in a way that their level of importance to humanity, their level of importance to you know trying to help us save the world by understanding them. Uh, and potentially by under rating the level of truth or the level of importance of each of these things. Um, so that we can kind of make some sense out of all of them, particularly the ones that are really causing huge political divides or huge racial divides that are just really dividing the world in so many ways that are dangerous and you know painful, potentially painful for ourselves and our children. So that's uh, the goal today. Um, let's jump right in. Martin, do you have um, any comments you want to start before we jump into this list? Well, as somebody who kind of studied that, uh, I, I got A in propaganda in university. I'm still not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, I, I like to think it's a good thing because it means I can see what propaganda is or how it works. And uh, the thing with these conspiracy theories is that uh, I did uh, my bachelor's thesis actually about trying to define the genre of conspiracy documentary movies. And uh, one of the things you realize is there are elements to it, uh, if especially to its presentation in media or communication of them, that you kind of have to think through like, okay, how much of this is uh, propaganda? And I think you don't have to do it yet. You don't have to do it just yeah. yet. You can wait for a second. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, just uh, wanted to say like, because that's not really, I'm not really talking about what would be on, on, on the list. What I'm talking about is the typology, like what terms, terms that you can work with if you're describing conspiracy theories. And uh, what I did was uh, try to look at various genres of communication uh, that have some rules or have some definitions of what they're supposed to be about and try to look at conspiracy theories and uh, assess what are they like uh, of, of all those possible things that have names and definitions and uh, were normal things before this became a popular thing. And one of them is propaganda. So you have uh, your basic propaganda and with propaganda, it's interesting. Uh, propaganda can have different intentions and that's why there's like a typology of propaganda. You can have a black, white or gray propaganda. It, it's very suggestive. You can have a white propaganda, which means you're trying to accomplish something helpful and constructive and truthful and good but for that purpose you're using indoctrination and propaganda so that the academic institutions or governments can try to be doing that for instance to make sure that people eat something that's more healthy or uh, that they take vaccinations for instance that's like you can have a propaganda that can even lie but uh, toward accomplishing a good end but that then you're moving to more of uh, more of a gray territory because the like the other extreme is black. Black is what you would imagine is somebody nefarious trying to gain more po more power or influence or create discontent. And so that's why they're making up stuff, accusations, and uh, uh, making especially their enemies look bad. And that's more sometimes uh, quite straightforward in how like uh, look at the like the members of another race are stupid and evil. And like it could be very basic like that, like like it used to be back in the day, even though I guess technically, do, do you know where the word propaganda comes from? Who invented it? No, no. Catholic Church. Really? That's like propaganda of faith is like they're yeah. trying to have make campaigns of um, converting people to faith. And that you could argue could have elements of white propaganda in that, like some of the people doing it believe that they're really helping to save people's souls and stuff. Mm. So. That's where it comes from. So, but then you have like the the next big iteration of it was black, like the blackest black, and that was World War One and World War Two nationalistic propaganda. But then the modern thing, the most common modern thing, and conspiracy theories today are mostly that is gray propaganda, which is trying to either confuse you about the nature of reality, uh, so it's not trying to make a point that's well understood. And uh, to that end, it might not be clear at all what even was to being accomplished by it that you're even hiding as a propagandist what it is the outcome or the belief that you're trying to accomplish really uh and uh so conspiracy theories have a lot of that but then there are elements there are other elements like sometimes it's just fiction like some of them just the propagandist or uh, conspiracy theorists are just creating good science fiction uh it, it's just making stuff up that's because it's cool or making connections because they are fun and that's more of a uh, sometimes even intertwined with culture. So then you're getting into like uh, X-Files territory that you would 
part of it would be presented as fiction and then it would be unclear necessarily if it, the fiction was supposed to be believed or not. Mm. But then you're moving into another genre and that's mystification. Mystification is uh, somebody could be like Sasha Baron Cohen, but that's trolling. Somebody would be making up weird theories uh, to just for their personal amusement or to make some sort of artistic point or they would be staging some sort of performances around it uh, or just because it's cool, but ultimately to con- it's part of the confusing the nature of reality. So it's also very postmodern. Mm-hmm. And uh, then the, finally, there's an element that can be truthful to it. And that's the documentary investigation element. And there you have the only chance that uh, the conspiracy theory is actually describing something that's real. And then the motivation could just really be a journalistic or investigative uh, motivation to mm-hmm. uncover a real conspiracy. And sort of the question always is, if you're trying to assess a conspiracy theory, is the extent to which, for instance, it is an actual journalistic investigation, what extent of it uh, is some sort of propaganda, and like then you can speculate about its intentions, but propaganda basically means you are not saying the truth. You're twisting the truth or omitting facts or you're doing manipulative language. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if you can try to assess to what extent it's some sort of a performative mystification, just like for fun or for the art or for something like that, that's not really political, but it's also misleading. And uh, I always forget a bunch of elements, I always, always forget the last one. So propaganda mystification documentary it was the last one. It was fiction definitely one? a fourth. A fiction, right. Fiction and to what extent it's some sort of like a cultural bleed through, like people have watched too much X-Files and people writing X-Files were putting some sort of their ideas, like wouldn't it be cool right. if scenarios and uh, because it's sort of funny things can happen. You can create a work of fiction that is so convincing by itself, even if it wasn't intended to, that people start believing they like uh, you introduce, for example, you introduce like in the V show, you introduce like uh, reptoid aliens and then like that have a human face, but underneath they're lizards. And then people would start swearing, swearing afterward that they are seeing lizard people and they will not even remember that they have seen it on a show and subconsciously the idea now just exists. So that, that's that's one like way how to uh, how I approached it back when I was writing a paper uh, about it. But then, of course, I think there are other things like you might actually try to assess like the level of danger, like yeah. the actual damage that it can cause. I think that's that's one thing. But as for the like what I was talking about, that's more. It's not very easy to say to just give it a truthfulness value. Uh, mm-hmm. Because sometimes, even with things like fiction, uh, there's a saying that like just because something's fictional doesn't mean it's not real. Meaning that you can actually describe truth using fiction fiction methods. That you yourself might, for instance, be 100% know it's true. Like you had a personal experience that you have uh, personal evidence that something is true, and so therefore you suspect you're not crazy and you suspect that it's a bigger problem. So you write a fictional book about it. That sort of describing what exactly what you really saw, but you're couching it as like, oh, that's just fiction. Like sometimes somebody would present it that way. So it's not as easy as saying truth false, uh, but uh, it's more of a scale or continuum. And uh, and it's really the question of it's a mix. It's a mix of what the intentions are and what the relationship to facts yeah. is. Okay. So let me just add the, uh, the the motivation behind each of these, I think, is is the key. And you can kind of think of the different motivations. You've either got monetary, you're trying to do it to make money. You've got political, which I, I guess is power control. Um, maybe business, which again is kind of money, so that maybe fits into money. And then faith. So maybe politics, money, faith, are those the three main motivations? Is there any anything else besides that? Or I guess just curiosity, maybe. Could be. That would be the documentary one. Or science but I wouldn't one. wouldn't underestimate some sort of artistic expression. Like mm-hmm. the, some of the ones could be mystifications, not necessarily for personal gain, but really mystifications for uh, because it's fun. Yeah, it's fun to be mystifying people. So, so trolling, so can... trolling is definitely a motivation that's real now. Yeah, and so trolling is the fun part, right? The fiction fun. That's okay. Really interesting. All right, so I guess our, our challenge here is taking all of these different categories and trying to sort them in some way that 
we can kind of take any conspiracy and kind of fairly easily categorize it, you know, using these different categories, whether, whether just it's one more thing. mystification documentary. Yeah, sure. But just one more thing. Uh, there's definitely also to not downplay it. Uh, there's also definitely a real motivation of some of these people involved in this. That's the people who like, I want to know what the truth is. Hmm. So, so some of those actually will be motivated by trying to get to the bottom of what's actually true. But like, yeah. then there could be a problem with like, if the person has uh, is mentally unbalanced. And so to them, it's about truth seeking, but uh, it can still be warped. Yeah, I think we can call that curiosity. And curiosity is definitely, I think, one of the key human traits that almost everybody has to some extent. They, they want to know what's true. Um, so I think that's definitely one of them. So you have monetary, political, faith, curiosity, and fun are kind of the five major motivations. I think that everything fits into somehow in that spectrum. In each For now, we, we, we might discover something else, but it, it makes yeah, sense. That's a good start. That's a good start. So you want to kind of just think on those lines which of these does this particular conspiracy kind of fall into the most you might at some point in the you know in the distant future once we organize this have some kind of zero to 100 percent for each of these categories you know at what what level in the spectrum does it fall into monetary this particular conspiracy uh what level does it fall into politics what level does it fall into religion faith what level does it fall into just tr fun and trolling yeah, sure. There's just a, just a, to be technical nitpicky. There's a bit of a difference between uh, the level that you've assessed it is and your confidence interval of how sure you are that it is this level. So there's always has to be some sort of number like what the estimate is, but then some indication of uh, how certain you are, right, about it. So because if you have like a your error margin is 100 percent or like 50 percent either way, then it doesn't matter what your assessment is because it means nothing. Yeah. So there has to be some sort of way to establish how sure you can be about it. Absolutely. And, and bear in mind that the goal with all of these things, whenever we do a list like this, we're trying to just create something where all the truth tellers that we decide, whether it's 10 or 100 or a million of them, they have some easy way to kind of go in and share how, how what they feel their level of uh, faith is or their level of truthfulness is on each of these things in a, in a, num in a numeric way that we can easily sort to the top. You know, that that 98 percent of truth tellers agree that this is on average 80 percent true or something like that, that that it makes it really easy to, to sort and filter through the garbage. Um, and that yeah, way, you know, that's one of the ways to establish some sort of confidence levels is like how many people assess it to yeah. something like the number. Exactly. So I think I think the confidence level will kind of solve itself as you get more and more people chiming in on, you know, how they. Feel. So if you just even have one number is what I'm saying, I think is enough to start with um, on, you know, if we just start with me and you and hopefully five or 10 others at some point in the near future, if we have a really well, good. It's still, it's still, it is two numbers. One number is what you assessed it. And the other number is how many people participated in the assessment. Right. And that's, yeah, exactly. That's you know, we don't, we track that number, but people don't have to like enter that number. People are kind of entering mm -hmm. one number and definitely <laughs> there's areas for comments, areas for links that say why they got to that number but they don't necessarily have to do that if it's very clear to them, okay, this is 99% true to me or or whatever. And and, and I think we definitely want to clarify that nothing's ever 100% or zero, hardly ever. You could say 99.9 .9 might be the max we even allow someone to say or something, just to kind of clarify that there's always room. Yeah, yeah because like, like strictly speaking, nobody has or can have 100% certainty even that their perceptions are real. Exactly. So it's like it's 100% or 0% is easy impossible. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's kind of just a fun way to engineer that from the beginning that nothing is zero and nothing is a hundred. You've always got zero point zero zero one to ninety nine point nine nine nine, and it's just kind of a, as a statement that that we believe that we're going to be open minded enough to, to everything to at least allow a shadow of a doubt that maybe this is true, and and let's figure out why and you know yeah yeah because if you it. say to prove something beyond a shadow of a doubt is uh, I'm not sure how you're going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Shadow of quantify shadow of doubt for me, please. Yeah, point point zero zero one percent accuracy or whatever. <laughs> That's the shadow is the point one percent. Because right? you're you're getting to the so-called infinitesimal numbers, and uh, there was a sort of a kind of a joke this between like some philosophers of mathematics uh, early on, where somebody introduced infinitesimal numbers as a concept, then they sort of mockingly called it uh, ghosts of departed quantities. <laughs> Okay, that sounds awesome. All right, so I think we've got a good structure. So we're going to rate them based on propaganda, 
uh, fiction, fun, mystification, and documentary slash science slash journalism. Those are those are the four categories. Yeah, that, that, that's a bit of a rating system, like you would get uh, well in a movie review or movie magazine when they had the different genres and they had like one to three points in each of the genres that it could possibly be, and so they're communicating what mix of genres it is. So yeah. this approach is very much like that. Yeah, exactly. So we could start with like a one to nine you know, on a scale of zero to 10 or whatever, I guess, and try to just rank them, just having fun, just trying to rank some of these things. And then, so we've got rating the conspiracies and the motivation behind each of these things. Um, so just to just be clear then, uh, if you have zero to 10 on documentary scale, then it yeah. means how much of it is factually true that in terms of uh, like a common consensus. Hmm. So how much of it is like most people would agree factual. Uh, and then uh, that's like an important scale because that's basically your truth, like strict truth metric. Uh, propaganda is not so much about if all the things in there are facts, but how manipulative the communication of whatever is in there is. Of course, pure lying is definitely going to increase the levels of propaganda outright, but oftentimes propaganda would be doing omissions, like just ignoring things that don't fit into the theory or be appealing to emotion, doing a lot of logical fallacies that are manipulative. It's like a whole bunch of them. Personal attack, appeal to emotion. It's like you can list which of those there are. So it's like how much the more of that that there is, like more things you check on, on like the sort of list of what are propagandistic things, the more you classify it as uh, propaganda. And you can have a propaganda that's very factual. That's not actually mutually exclusive. A lot of the white propaganda, like if a scientific institution is putting out a uh, white propaganda that is like about vaccination they may not lie about anything in there and might specifically try to do it to enlighten people but it the reason why it's propagandistic is not that it's that there are facts in it the, the reason is that they want people to take actions because that's ultimately what propaganda is you're doing whatever you need to do uh from your point of view to accomplish the end of people doing what you want that's what manipulative language means. So extreme person, like very severe persuasion that doesn't allow the other person to think differently or really doesn't want them to allow to consider options. That's like when you have skeptics who say that all the other things that you don't like definitely 100% are false and always have been false and don't look into them because you're only going to find out that they're false and you're going to waste time and stuff. That's propagandistic. It's yeah. in the interest of enlightenment, but that's like pro enlightenment propaganda is, is then what it would be. Mystification yeah. that would be more like a, just how much does it look like that the people are doing stuff in there for fun? That 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 is a comedic element to it uh, in terms of how the things are presented, or purely artistic aesthetic com component that's uh, creating some sort of a unreality feeling <laughs> or experience there. Uh, that's most difficult to quantify, but but still there are some checklist things you can have because usually mystificators, stage performances, dress up as characters. It, it's like there's a whole thing. Like uh, if you look at Sasha Baron Cohen and things like Borat, like there's a lot of mystification in there. Like the like if somebody in the movie or the communication uh, poses as a different personality so that the people dealing with them are misled about who it is. And especially if it's for comedic effect, then that's like a signature mystif mystification thing to do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, fiction is uh, basically a rating like how much of what's in there is based on cultural tropes, like pre-existing uh, fantasy mythology. That would be even things like the ancient aliens doing stuff. And what they're basically saying are legends from the past. Mm -hmm. Then that's that's fiction. That could be an element of mystification in there also on their end, if, like, depending on how they're presenting it. But uh, if, if a lot of the content that they're saying are stories, then then you would uh, be like, the percentage of like what's the like, stories versus facts in there. So the more there are stories, the higher the fiction bar would be, the fiction score, and more facts and not stories in there would be, the more it would be documentary. So that, because that, that's like the reason why I chose these things, like you can actually quite standardize or quantify this sort of measuring approach that's why i'm just explaining it very specifically because this this is a science that you can actually measure it in this Absolutely. way i like it and that's that's really the goal of this exercise okay well let's bear that in mind so we've got the the way we're going to rate them um we're going to get this all on our website once we clarify it and we'll uh, maybe just 
get everything you just said into text somehow and and explain this is how we want to rate it. Maybe or... maybe I should translate the appropriate portions of my thesis. Yes, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll lean on you for that. Um, so let's just run through a couple of the kind of more common conspiracies using this kind of lens and see see how it evolves with us. So let me just go ahead and share the screen. So we started off with just the the wiki list list of conspiracies. And again, you know, wiki in itself isn't always 100% uh, accurate with some of its lists, but yeah. this one. Yeah, let, let, let's scary. read. Let's read what the skeptical guerrillas want us to think. Yeah, this this one I think was at least a, a decent um, kind of grouping, at least anyways of uh, of of kind of types of conspiracies. Let's just no, say. It's, it's always a reasonable starting point. It's also yeah. an insight into academic frame of mind. Yeah. So let's share this uh, window here. So I've got my Google Doc with the list of conspiracies and then this wiki list. We're kind of we'll, we'll kind of just go through it a little bit. Um, yep. So I just wanted to <laughs> kind of go through some of the basics, and they're just sorted they're just sorted alphabetically here. And oh, I, that's and terrible. I'd like, to, <laughs> I'd like to sort them by kind of level of importance or level. Exactly, of, uh, they like alphabetical sorting is the most useless sorting. Like <laughs> yeah. conspiracy number one: black helicopters. <laughs> that, that's so in the middle of everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the aviation ones are, are definitely kind of interesting. What planes disappeared, but I don't think they necessarily matter as much as some of the other ones. Let's just say they're they're no, kind of like, interesting. Like if you if you look like let's 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 look at it like just stop for a second because they're sort yeah. of pointless conspiracies. So I guess a good place to start to just calibrate our measuring sticks. Yeah. So if you look at them, like if you look at like for instance chemtrails. Like game trails probably wouldn't score very highly on like documentary or factual because that that the whole do you know the whole concept of game trails? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm I've read through all of this, so it's okay. just a matter. Of, and I'm, I'm, well, I was I'm, fairly, I'm, I was I'm fairly familiar with I was fairly familiar with most of them before. Black helicopters was actually new for me. That was kind of an interesting one, but uh, it was fun to read through all of these. And I, I yeah, yeah I'm just, uh, we should probably for the listeners we should probably try to say. To define, what like what are. it is about at least briefly <laughs> yeah so black helicopters are basically the concept that the us is going to be attacked by some uh black helicopter group of individuals that's going to conquer them at some point in the future that's oh really the helicopter one yeah it was kind of interesting that's, emerged, that's in weird because because that's not not true <laughs> i mean like of course like uh this is not true i mean that's not what people mean by black helicopters most commonly in pop culture okay well, yeah, that was like I said, it was news to me just just reading this that it was well, it was, the United Nations force would soon arrive in black helicopters to bring the U.S. under U.N. control. <laughs> that was there. That was that conspiracy. Well, that's sort charity. of that's a, to, to get a bit conspiratorial immediately then, because I did not expect this mm -hmm. black helicopters. If you ask people about black helicopters who are like into ufology conspiracies or whatever, they're not going to tell you this. This looks like a bit of a straw man cherry picked. What's the craziest version of that has been connected with it? Yeah. What it really is, is that many people, like it's connected to men in black, actually. Mm. It's connected to the idea that these are black helicopters who are like flying silently and who are like around, like for instance, when there was some like UFO shenanigans or like people being followed by quiet, silent black helicopters. Mm. So that's really what it is. It's more X Files. Yeah, that makes sense to to me too. So it's I, a lot of these are kind of like that, where it just gives one example, but there might be many more examples that they yeah, completely. So, so just to give the like with the chemtrails, it's like the idea that uh, governments or somebody's putting some chemicals into chemtrails and they are like spraying people like when the planes are flying and leaving chemtrails behind. Yeah. So I don't think they could explain it differently. That that's basically how it is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's secret large scale atmospheric program, yeah. the FLAP program. So yeah, yeah so, and basically the conspiracy is that they're trying to limit the population or they're trying to change the climate somehow. Yeah. So, um, so so this yeah. this like like the black helicopters actually the, the the real version of what I think black helicopter conspiracy is is more of a falls more into the sort of a fiction mythology thing. Mm -hmm. uh, chemtrails fall strictly into like anti-documentary, <laughs> like, like meaning like anti-factual. Yeah, more yeah. more more so than a, a story. This is just bad science. Yeah, I was pretty shocked that 17% of people globally believe in chemtrails in some form or another. And, you know, it's it's definitely one of those ones that I guess like, could have some truth from some random well, government. Think, but it, but may, maybe, pretty... more so than, maybe more so than flat Earth, but it's probably yeah. as wrong as flat Earth is. Yeah, and I I tend to agree with that absolutely, that it's just it's just a plane, for crying out loud. It's, 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 the, it's, it's the exhaust of a plane. 
But uh, anyway, it's definitely uh, one of those interesting ones. That again, yeah. And then, and then the just to just to like to finish the category. Uh, then the missing airplanes. There's actually yeah. of these three, the missing airplanes are by far the most reasonable conspiracy. Yeah, because like, there was a real airplane that got missing and wasn't found. Right. So there's definitely there's definitely truth in the fact that the plane's missing and we don't know why it was missing. You know, maybe it crashed in the ocean and we can't find the wreckage. Maybe a UFO zooped it up or maybe some random government. Yeah, well, then you know, it yeah, escalates it. quickly that like maybe it was swallowed by a black hole, as they said yeah. on like CNN or whatever. Yeah, uh, the, uh, it got. Yeah, the, there was that uh, show. What's it called? Where the, the plane went forward in time 10 years or something like that. Again. Yeah. Yeah, very, there, there are some accounts like so, like of, of these like three different categories of aviation conspiracy theories, which are all kind of pointless in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. So if the rating was like how dangerous or harmful these conspiracies are, probably not very. Yeah. Uh, these are just very sort of like the black helicopters is a nice story. The chemtrails are really for people really not understanding science, and uh, the missing flights are like interesting mystery which would get some points in the documentary because like there are facts about it that yeah. that exist but uh beyond that uh it's also wouldn't very highly like none of these would actually score very highly even on propaganda because there's nothing to accomplish by this right yeah the mo most of these ones are just score high in the, in the kind of the fun fiction area i guess i guess it's like kinda... fiction fiction mystification maybe yeah so that makes sense. That's a good start. So aviation. Now get into some some deeper ones. Business and industry, I think, kind of fits into the monetary one quite a bit as far as motivation. They're just trying to hide certain things. Um, these are just a couple of examples that I think there's probably a lot well, more. It's in interesting here. that I have no idea what those examples are implying. Or about. Yeah, this Deepwater Horizon is basically the Gulf uh, of Mexico accident, the oil rig. There was a movie sure, on it. Sure, I, I know of it, but the, what, what is there about it? Yeah, they're saying that, um, let's see. Oh, submarines, legend, right. Sabotaged okay, by submarine. those seeking to prevent environmentalism. So they, they're saying that the, the environmentalists bombed them just to try to promote environmentalism or something like that. Okay, so this would score highly on propaganda. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then the, the new Coke a theory that Coca-Cola intentionally changed to an inferior formula. Uh, yeah, I don't know that much about that one. But. Well, I do. I was actually a fan of Coca-Cola, and they did change to an inferior formula. Okay. But uh, the not not everywhere in the world, but like the way in which it happened. I like not sure what the conspiracy was suggesting the formula change was, but there was a real change of formula, and that was that they switched from sugar to a different kind of chemical. They mm -hmm. from normal sugar to what's it called? Uh, Glyco syrup or something. Corn okay. syrup is, is the ingredient. Corn syrup, yeah, right. And corn syrup isn't uh, sugar, normal sugar. It's different right. chemically. It's more of a fructose than it is glucose. Hmm. So okay. it did happen. Like this, this one, totally true. It, I just don't think that like, the conspiracy meant that. Uh, yeah. But uh, they, they were, and then the, the secret reason was that they were cheapskates. Right. <laughs> but also, I would expect that if you have a category of business and industry conspiracy theories on Wikipedia, you would have something there that's not this nonsense. Like, yeah. Uh, okay. like, like something more significant. I think a, a lot of them fall down under economics and society. New World Order, oh, Air, right, Denver, right. Or George Soros, Freemasonry. Right, uh, right. That, that's the all-time all favorites. Yeah, I, I would think I would probably tie those together on our website to some extent, where anything to do with economics and business yeah. would kind of go into the same that, category. That, that's a weird distinction. It is. Yeah, I agree. So I, I kind of uh, I put them kind of together over here. I wouldn't, I, I'm actually not not a fair or not a fan of the aviation category as well because the point isn't if it has a point the conspiracy theory the point isn't that it was flying in the air, right. Right. That that's not what's the point of those conspiracies. Like the point would be, who are you blaming for it? Right, that makes sense. So maybe we need to, yeah, we definitely need to come up with a, a slightly different category that's not. That, that, that's like that's like if you had like a, one of the conspiracies was that Coke changed their recipe, and so you created the category like Coca Cola related conspiracies. Right, right. Or like it's sodas good. or something like that. Like, that that's not a good category. No, it's it's too specific. We have to kind of get more broad, kind of link these things together. A little bit more so we can throw basically anything to do with economics business or monetary incentives in my mind mm -hmm. kind of fall into the, this category of economics and society to some extent but then you kind of have the venn diagram where they fall into multiple 
you know, categories like politics kind of fall, fits in that. Well, that's sure. The, the broadest ones will. And I guess at this point, it makes sense to note uh, that there is a different sort of classification that makes sense about conspiracy theories. Or it's not so much a classification, but it's the main argument, like what to keep in mind if you want to believe or don't want to believe in any particular one, is that uh, there's a function. The larger the conspiracy you're claiming is, uh, the more people it involves would all have to be keep secret about it the less likely it is to be true for any extended period of time. Right. That the conspiracy is true, that, that, that there's actually no truth yeah. to the conspiracy. Because so, it would have, so, it would have so that's out. why, like, if you say something like Illuminati New World Order, that's a very heavy burden to prove in its yeah. entirety. You, you really have to go smaller in scope if you want to gain some of those documentary points. Yeah. So I, th I think that basically with most of these New World Order ones, if you go into them, they're just kind of, I mean, they're trying to argue that there's this big kind of organized group doing it and they're black offices trying to actually, you know, take over the world like the Bond villains. And I, 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 I could definitely see that there's individuals that are trying to influence, you know, the direction of the world and everybody's, that's you, exactly you know, Elon Musk does that, I'm sure, you know. That, that, that's exactly it. It's uh, the critical response to this by reasonable skeptics is, which is very reasonable, is that, uh, well, the problem is in assuming they're an organized group. They're a group. They're not very organized. Yeah. They just it, have aligned interests. And that's yeah, why they're it, doing similar things. I think it comes down to how much of what they're doing is actually, you know, diabolical James Bond villain style. Well, well what doesn't help? What, what doesn't help is that the rich people do have like uh, get-togethers, and sometimes they're like burning effigies there. Like that doesn't help. No, it doesn't. And like, yeah, all the uh, Burning Man style stuff, or Davos, the Davos uh, thing, where they, all the richest people in the world get together once a year to discuss. You know, world domination summits and things like that, whatever it might be. Some of them joke yeah, about and it. Like burning an owl eff or effigy or something. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I think the, the WDS is an actual summit, world domination summit, that I think is kind of a joke of that, a mockery of that, right? Where they're just trying <laughs> to come up with ideas on how to save the world in some ways or how to make the world because better. They, like, of course, of course, that rich people get like hang together and, and talk about stuff. Yeah. Sure. They coordinate to some extent. <laughs> yeah. They're shared interests that that's it's not a secret and it's a you could say conspiracy to the effect to the level of which it's it's uh what they're doing is secret and coordinated and uh nefarious and there are many specific examples of like uh conspiracies in business in like somebody try to screw somebody over or embezzle money or like do whatever like crime happens that's yeah. that's not a conspiracy theory that's just uh you just have to be like specific with the examples. Yeah, exactly. And I think all those fall into these these death ones as well, which are quite interesting when you talk about JFK being my personal favorite. There's been, I think, what, like close to a thousand books, 1000 books written on the JFK assassination and how many percentage? Uh, I think like 90 percent or something. Yeah, there it is. 90% of which are work supporting the view there was a conspiracy. So that's a yep. pretty high kind of level of, of you know. Yeah, but uh, that's actually, this is an interesting example because uh, most people that I know who are, I know it's like a bias of my in-group, but my in-group are like people who are social scientists sometimes. Mm. So most people who would like study security studies or stuff, like they wouldn't really be surprised if there was an involvement of the secret agency. Mm. That's not unreasonable to assume. Like the the hard part is proving it, but to that end, I think there's a the, the, some documents about it have to like were supposed to be made public, like unclassified, and Trump refused to do it, and he, like everybody thought that he's definitely going to do it, and kicked it down to Biden, and now Biden is refusing to do it. So now everybody is like just a few days ago. Uh, I think Michael Shermer, one of the leading skeptics in the world, was on Joe Rogan's podcast. And they were talking about it, like of the like at the start of the show, like that's the number one topic. And of course, Michael Shermer always believes that like the official story is basically accurate, and that it was just uh, the lone gunman and uh, uh, Oswald and nobody else. And of course, like believes in every facet of the official story. And I've heard like all of the fa various facets of the official story being questioned in all kinds of ways by all kinds of investigators, who like many of them weren't just lunatics. So it's just. Uh, in this case, like if you want an example of a conspiracy that's high profile and many people have believed for a long time, and there's actually some real chance that there's some real conspiracy going on, this would probably be the one. Yeah. I, I, 
I think that's why it's kind of a good example. It should definitely be kind of probably one of our top 10 to just, just kind of dig into a little bit as, as an example of how something could be kind of a big conspiracy and, um, and still kind of be unproven, I guess, even this, this year, this long after, even though 90% of people kind of believe, and there's a thousand books written on, you know, yeah, because like the, the, the sort of key suspicious facts about it, which I think are keeping alive the conspiracy angle is that, uh, even like very soon at the beginning, like there were some key people who were witnesses who misty like not, not mysterious, but suspiciously died. Like it, it like there was there were signs of a cover up. Yeah. Yeah. And then like the bigger question is then what was being covered up? And I think Michael Shermer was implying something like uh which is a reasonable point by itself, is that uh if there was a cover up, like you can find some evidence of maybe a cover up by the secret agency, you shouldn't be assuming what the reason for the cover up was. Right. Like yeah, they may, might have been like a, they may wanted to stamp that down because of the relations with Soviet Union or they didn't want to believe that uh, the po population of United States, they don't, didn't want to, them to believe that uh, a foreign enemy nation have, has successfully assassinated the president. So there was definitely a lot of motivation for the leading people in that situation to control the narrative. Yeah, makes sense. So that's so definitely that's, that's why just like in these cases, it's it's difficult. Like whatever it was that happened, and the secret the secret agency like CIA gets involved for whatever reason, then the unfortunate uh, result is like it would be really hard for a very long time to have any idea what actually happened. Yeah, the the, the level of propaganda there is super high. Like you know, ninety five percent that of that is revolved around political propaganda, trying to hold on to the narrative and not have people lose faith in the U.S. You know, yeah, you you could say almost. you could say white propaganda maybe. Yeah, might not be nefarious propaganda, but surely manipulative uh, manipulation of communication. Yeah, and then there's also you know the the conspiracy around JFK doing something that the powers that be didn't want him to do. You know, he was going to change society, implement a basic income, or or you know change society for the better in some way in his mind that the powers that be didn't want, and you know the U.S. government themselves or the powers that be within the US government decided to assassinate him and they're covering it up obviously because they wanted to. Uh, yeah, but there's like a lot of wild cards. Obviously America had many enemies and he had some mafia ties and I think he angered the mafia people. So it's like, it's, it's, it's actually reasonably broad, like who had motivation right. to do something like this and some means. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely an interesting one. The fact there's just so many different angles, so many different books, so many different perspectives on why and how and, you know, and uh, everything around why it happened um, no it's just like a, it's it's interesting on every scale because it's like there's a good chance there are some facts that can be uncovered if you investigate it it's important enough to warrant investigation and yeah. it kind of matters what actually happened yeah it's kind of the um, americans yeah i think in many ways well, even the whole world really because like he was a, a central you know guy that had the power to change the world in many ways and the fact that you know that assassination happened in, in such a public and kind of you know, complicated way that it just, it really changed the structure of society as we know it. Um, you know, not understanding that and, and all the conspiracies around that. I mean, the only thing that's probably- there's, a, there's levels to that even, because you can't even just say JFK conspiracy. Uh, there's many versions that are themselves on a spectrum. Yeah. Like you can find UFO, UFO people, like UFO researchers, who would be somewhat convinced that uh, the main reason why he got assassinated was because he wanted to disclose the UFO reality. Yes, I've heard that one too. <laughs> that's that's definitely uh, an interesting one. Anyway, so and, that and even and even that and even that has some corroborating evidence if you want to look for it. Yeah, it's not entirely out of nowhere. For sure, for sure. So that that would get a high mark on propaganda, and potentially we'd have to kind of get into the motivation, political, mm -hmm. definitely some monetary. I don't know if there's much faith there, but but that would definitely be a a fairly fun one to kind of categorize on the site. And I think everybody would have, you know, interesting parts trying to rate what they what level they thought about. It's also ideas. an interesting challenge. Like you could turn it into a case study if you had actually a bunch of people of goodwill who just don't want to mislead, who actually seriously try to disentangle the facts and theories and stuff, and like try to make sense of it. Yeah, that could be an interesting project because there's a lot there. Yeah, even just pick, picking your favorite of those thousand books for everybody to kind of research a little bit. You know, I'm sure I'm sure there's people that have done that. So 
It's or just like kind have of a, a, yeah, for, for that one, for that one, you would have to have a separate map of, because that's by itself is a category. You would have to have a separate map of the options, what it could actually be. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, you would have to rate the possibility, the, vari the versions. Yeah. Of it. yeah. Yeah, I think the, the more complicated and important ones like this would definitely kind of link you to a whole different um, whole different site to just kind of categorize and talk about that one particular conspiracy, maybe. Sure, sure. Like, they, they, they definitely implicitly or explicitly it would have to be something like a importance score hmm. and yeah. this one is like top three of all time yeah i agree i agree that's cool all right so we'll, we'll move along that's definitely some interesting discussion so we're, we're kind of getting there so that's the DF, jfk assassination it, it fits under government politics it kind of fits under economics to some extent maybe it might even fit under ufos like you said so it's kind of one of those ones that is a venn diagram of, of a lot of different categories so um We'll, we'll maybe come back to that. All right. So the next one, economics, we talked a little bit about these. New World Order, Denver Airport is the, apparently the... Uh, you know, I know about that one. You know that one, the underground city? That's a fun yeah, that's one. that's interesting right? because that's like more documentary than the other ones in this category because it's narrowed down. Yeah. There's a real place. A pretty easy way to prove that it's there. Somebody would be able to get in there somehow. And I wouldn't say necessarily pretty easy. But uh, mm -hmm. you can definitely see like the super creepy decorations of the airport and stuff. And it's just yeah. like really raising some question marks. Hmm. Interesting. What, what they were going on, like with that, like going for with that one. Yeah. And then George Soros, of course, being one of the, the heads of the Illuminati or, or whatever. Uh, this uh, also a bit more narrowed down. So there's more to say about it. But also, therefore, you can quickly see that, sure, it's a powerful, influential person like all the other rich people. And, uh, he did some programs, so he did try to influence something somewhere, as most rich people do. And he just, it's, it's very difficult to find proof that he's like a devil incarnate, some super important one person who's doing some super important nefarious things in the world. Yeah. So it scores, I would say, say it scores highly on propaganda in this yeah. case. For sure. Because he's like a con convenient political target of the like other side of the political spectrum, like to single out. Mm. What do you think about the Freemasonry stuff? I bet actually a friend of mine uh, found out a couple of weeks ago is actually a Freemason, one of the local uh, leaders. That's so trying to learn that's more. more of that. a, that's more of a combination of uh, actually more on the less on the propaganda and more on the fiction and uh, documentary mix because that's a real historical thing. And like, like you say, those people exist. It's not a made up and it's not like a made up Illuminati thing. It's uh, real organizations with real people in them, real history. But then there's a lot of a uh, story around it. Yeah, like and it, mythologically, even like going way back into the past. Yeah, it comes it comes down to what is their purpose, right? What's their motivation? And that's kind of a faith based one to some extent. Yeah, um, as as well as maybe politics and monetary a little bit. But they're just their their goal, as I understand it, is to make bad men good and good men better. At the end of the day, and, and it's similar to our goal of saving the world, well, making the world a better place. As an order, the story is, of course, like Freemasonry as like about the builders of the cathedrals and builders of the monuments. Mm. So yeah. there's some sort of implication of uh, secret no initiated knowledge and uh, more of a sort of constructive outlook. But it does overlap with like the New World Order. It does, which is like the concept of Illuminati is like in between New World Order and Freemasons right. on some sort of spectrum. Yeah, where the free, for Freemasons are the actual group that anyone can kind of go and join and sign up to just get get a part of. And then maybe the deeper, the deeper dark parts of, of the organization as you get deeper into it, maybe it connects into the Illuminati and maybe it connects into these other organizations that... that yeah, but but that definitely, definitely, this is like, in, in this category, it's the most factual because it's the most actually real thing that happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely interesting to kind of dig into that. A little bit more that's definitely like i said documentary science high and it's definitely the level of truth there is high it's just a question of of how nefarious they might be at their higher levels that, that's the challenge. yeah the intention would be unclear in this case yeah whether they're actually trying to control everybody uh or whether they're just really trying or, to make or like the better. question also of their real impact yeah yeah like with the new yeah. or new world order thing if you assume it's like uh the richest people and presidents then they will have impact with the Freemasons, it's not clear what level of impact on anything they have. Yeah, like whether they're secretly controlling all the presidents of the world in some way, right? That everybody's, you know, a Freemason. Like, you know? like, like uh, Kanye West said recently, 
it's the Jews. And uh, because if you if you look at like the presidents and stuff, you American presidents who were basically all Christian, uh, but never mind that. Uh, next to them is always some Jewish person. Yeah, the Jews the Jews are in control of everything, and that's argu <laughs> arguably why the, the Hitler want, tried to uh, to get rid of them all is because they were controlling everything and they were messing well, up. It's like the, power. that's the very old school black propaganda example, which is just so easy to say that. And I guess people back then were so simple simpler that the mentality they could genuinely have the mentality of like just Christians good, Jews bad. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly and that's a lot of these conspiracies are, are kind of revolved around that that's why you know the the motivation of of faith and religion kind of being a, a core one trying to control people and control yep. i guess uh eth ethnicity race and religion kind of all go hand in hand yep. right there's uh let's let's look at those ones for a second because with yeah, like the, the illuminati there is definitely connection to like zionism so there's a connection to the ethnic conspiracy yeah yeah so they're all they're all basically here a whole bunch of them yeah, but that's very again like that's sort of sort of basic categorization as to be useless. I like anybody can think of if you say there's a religious or ethnic uh, propaganda conspiracy theories that uh, yeah they will be against Christians and against Muslims and against Jews. Yeah, but so I think it's just, it's just yeah it's trying to list I guess the biggest ones with the most impact and kind of how. But that that's how just they... the, the biggest three religions then. Yeah, exactly. Antichrist. Too super obvious. Bible and Jesus Islam yeah no it's it's really hard to kind of get deep into any of these they're just kind of trying to say um you know what's well, what's fairly common about it well let's but, think lots of them are also at this point somewhat archaic uh I think it's uh, the the only one that seems to be uh, unfortunately an evergreen is the against the Jews the anti-semitism yeah anti-semitism that's that's definitely kind of number one here of the uh because I, like, I i'm not noticing many groups in the world who are like effectively causing damage like because they're anti-christian specifically mm. i think like christians in america especially have this tendency they need to arm themselves with weapons because everybody else is out to get them right but uh they're really not that much yeah D definitely one of our goals of, of all of this movement is to i guess categorize most of these ethnicity race and religion ones if we can kind of categorize like most if not all of these as kind of really bad and really kind of false well, that's uh, the thing there's a like you can unite them like you can unite these because that it doesn't matter that it's a christian against a jewish person or a jewish person against a muslim or whatever that's not the important thing about it the important thing about it that it's tribalism right tribalism it is very old it is very classic it is very basic and uh any tribe can be uh but i don't think you spelled it right any, any tribe can be against yeah, any tribe, and it doesn't matter what those names of those tribes are. The principle is the same. That's why you can say that uh, religious like, fundamentalists are all more similar to each other across faiths mm -hmm. than to non-religious or not so extreme religious people within their own religion. Right, 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 right. That makes sense. And that's that's kind of our, our challenge and our goal with saving the world is uniting people across religions across race across nationalities across tribes let's just say across tribes and and finding a way to bridge those gaps um so we want to kind of i guess debunk the conspiracies that are trying to uh widen those gaps like this, you know, this is the one of them on. that's also very important and uh, also highly scoring in harmful yeah yeah, it's because definitely... like some of those like chemtrails, like I don't think anybody's ever been harmed because of somebody believing in chemtrails. Right. That right, that's right, not right. significant or harmful specifically. Tribalism, racism are harmful, whatever theory or propaganda you're basing on them. Yeah. Yeah, I think I agree with you that this this stuff. You can like and... literally, you can literally just if you want to quantify it, you can literally just be be counting uh, the dead and wounded people oh, because of that belief. Yeah. Okay. Count the number of people that this kind of affects and, and hurts, right? And try to quantify it that way. All right. That makes sense. Um, extraterrestrials and UFOs. Let's just talk a little bit about that one. Um, but that's a fair, fair standalone category. This categorization makes sense. Yeah. This, this is kind of on its own. It doesn't really get too deep into any specific ones, but there's definitely been. Yeah. Well, well, but this is inexcusable, though. It's like such a plethora of so many different things, and they're just like, slap or like ufo stupid well what they're doing is they're basically they have a whole section for it so ufo can they do okay different wiki right 
Can you, can, can you take a peek in there? Okay, well, okay, okay. Here's, so here's the bigger list. It was so big they couldn't fit it in in there reasonably, then it's right? Fair. Okay, okay. Because you but can't just you say know. UFO conspiracies either. That's you got way Foo too Fighters, ridiculous. Ghost Rockets, Flying Disc, Chronology. Right. Monster, but then there will be a different issue though. Uh, if it's like, uh, what's the name of this USP, UFO conspiracy theories? And they basically saying that all of these things are a conspiracy theory, because <laughs> yeah. uh, that's also not how this works. Yeah, because Foo Fighters and Ghost Rockets, it's not a conspiracy theory. They like would always call, I guess, that because those are just events that happened, right. and what they are implying is that every time, because somebody asserted that UFOs were involved, then all of these are conspiracy theories. Mm. And that's that I think that's also wrong. Uh, because if you have a conspiracy theory, these are so like the list of those things. It's not the list of the theories, well, because theory is an explanation that connects facts and events together into a narrative. Like uh, Foo Fighters isn't a theory by itself, isn't connecting, it isn't connecting facts into a narrative. You could take the examples of because these are accounts of people. These are basically that's this is a data set. Like these are in play, like whenever people were saying that something happened with UFOs. And if somebody is saying, I was walking outside and a flying saucer landed, that person is not communicating a conspiracy theory. They're sharing an experience or saying a witness account. Right. Account isn't a theory. I think like, like this, this is all kinds of wrong then if I, if I think about it. But uh, so the, the big question is, what are actually the UFO theories that are meaningfully different from each other? And I'm not okay. sure if you show, show me the list, please, again. Let's go back again. Sure. We've got... Uh, what what else on there? So Foo Fighters, Flying Discs, Roswell, Recovered Discs, Hosks, um, a whole bunch of different chronology of different things. Scully and Alien Bodies, uh, Air what? Force Knowledge of UFOs, Kehoe, uh, what else? It's all different names. Gray Barker and the Men okay, of Black. Okay, so this, this is a this is a mess. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is something. This is... It, I wonder if there's a different maybe site or something we could kind of refer to for for UFOs. Well, and stuff. I don't think like if somebody made a better chronology of this, a better classification. Like I don't think the UFO people would be classifying it as conspiracy theories a lot yeah. of times, so they wouldn't help you in that way. That's a good point. But, well, uh, yeah, I guess it's not about classifying it as conspiracy theory versus classifying it as, um, oh, I don't know. What's a good way to, maybe we don't want to label all these as conspiracy theories, but just. Um... Because of course, like, like there are words, hoax. Hoax isn't a conspiracy theory. No, ho hoax is clearly something that's kind of clearly false that people are doing for some kind of personal gain. Yeah, right. if if it's that, like like if they say here, Roswell Bloon and recover disc in quotation marks hoaxes, that's so yeah. biased. Yeah, like yeah, you shouldn't have a dictionary with such a biased just title. Yeah, that's a good point. Thing. Because um, it's contested. Because the the cultural fact is many of these are contested by people who include people who are reasonable researchers. So yeah. it's it's pretty ballsy to just say, and this is a hoax, and this is a hoax, <laughs> in just like a dictionary. Yeah, yeah, they're they're just trying to. I guess you're right. Trying, to, they're using their own propaganda. Yeah, this is like this. This may not be a conspiracy theory, but this is propaganda. This is propaganda. This page. The, the way Wikipedia gets things out there to kind of bias people a certain way or another is definitely propaganda, and it's a conspiracy theory of its own. How Wiki, how Wiki shows conspiracy theories. <laughs> It's a, a little bit, but then you can quickly prove that there are skeptical guerrillas who are editing these sites with an agenda and they say it out loud. So it's not a very covered up conspiracy theory. Or yeah. let's say it's more of a just, yeah, this is a conspiracy. You can prove that it is. It's not so much of a theory. Yeah. This is also not, this, this doesn't have many steps. It's just like this page is edited by somebody. Who is it? Well, because how biased this is, very likely. And you can look who edited it particularly and try to chase them down. But uh, mm -hmm. this clearly is like a group of people who call themselves skeptical guerrillas because they say, we want to be doing these things. And this is a product of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. OK, well, I think um, we can definitely uh, dig deeper on these UFO ones, maybe as a, as a separate uh, topic. I mean, we did a little well, bit. We can, but I would, still, I would still like to try to establish if like, OK, so what do you think is like an UFO, uh, a one UFO theory mm. that is, uh, involves a conspiracy? Let's, let me think. So. Um, 
I, well, basically, it comes down to whether or not there are actual sightings of UFOs. All the sightings, are they just kind of people's imagination or or not? You know, do UFOs actually exist or not? That's kind of the number one thing for me. Um, and, you know, the thousands of different sites that lead to, towards that. Sure, um, sure. But like uh, the conspiracy theory, you at least have to have to like uh, consider that maybe, OK, these events happened hmm. without explaining them necessarily. And the conspiracy theory actually is the explanation of the facts. How do you put the facts together? So right. let's assume that there are facts that something happened in Roswell and something happened like there was a flyover over the White House. It was one of the big ones in the 50s. Hmm. And that uh, there's uh, the uh, whistleblower, or there's a bunch of whistleblowers, but uh, there's a bunch of accounts that uh, something happened at the nuclear sites that have been here for some things. And there's a uh, Bob Lazar that like there's a bunch of accounts that they people were working on reverse engineering alien tech mm. or tech that's not ours or whatever that means. And so then like which theories are there that connect these facts and into a narrative? Right. So you might just you might want to just group sightings as just a, a, a anytime someone says I saw a UFO and they have some kind of picture or proof or it's a group of people that say they saw a UFO. That's kind of one category. I saw an alien. I saw a UFO. Oh, okay, the, the, word, the word that the UFO people use is experiencer. They're really leaning into experience because it's not always necessarily visual. Right. So I didn't experiences. So because it's like abduction experience, those. like you might not be able to see much during an uh, abduction experience. Right. And then paranormal activity, I would classify more as maybe ghosts, maybe. Um, you know, maybe uh, just things we can't understand. So maybe it's maybe it's aliens, maybe it's ghosts, maybe it's uh, you know werewolves or you know anything like that that we just can't understand. That well, that, sure, but uh, the movement in the field lately or the various fields of studying this phenomena was that is unifying, meaning that uh, oh maybe we were wrong about trying to put it into separate boxes. We don't actually know what this is, and it seems that all of these paranormal activities are connected. Hmm in every yeah. instance so that's yeah. why again the word experience is is the my, the main used one yeah to me i think it, it definitely, definitely falls in. In. i think i think it definitely falls into a similar category as just ufos and all the sightings in general it's just just things we don't understand scientifically um yeah, yeah i think the, the the term like what well, could be like anomalies anomalies is, yeah is what that is anomalous like anomalous experiences yeah i think that's, that's a good way of phrasing it here i think is what that is anomalous Anomalous, uh, I'll put the spelling right here. <laughs> There's a Y there. Yeah. Experiences. Okay. okay. What other categories of UFO st stuff besides that? So you've got sightings, you've got tech, which is, I think, is a separate one. Any kind of. Yeah, event. because like you either have like one sort of, if you want to categorize it, then one branch is that one theory is uh, government knows about this and they want to get their hands on the alien tech. So they shut down and, reco or, and or recovered some crashed saucers and dead bodies and they have studied them. And they have reverse engineered some version and all of the, the theories don't agree what level of it. Uh, they've all managed to reverse engineer some version of the alien tech. Hmm. Let's kind of cover but up. Basically, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, basically the up. government's behind it. Yeah, the government's very simply. Yeah. So okay. So it's basically cover-ups. The government knows they exist, and they're covering it up. Um, that's a very specific one. There's just sightings, experiences by normal people, and the, they might be interrelated. Maybe they're both. The government's trying to cover up the yeah. sightings. And and, and, and yeah. And, and this one implies the important differences between the UFO theories. This one implies that the government is doing cover-ups and knows stuff. Then right. it's a different perspective that they know about it, but they don't really know about it a lot. That they know that so, something's so there not, not, they, don't not, not, that they don't have that much agency to use the word right so cover-ups and then so, the so then because then basically like we before before we've talked about terra invicta the different factions yeah. so you do have the whole faction that the aliens are the good guys this is their theory in reality aliens are the good guys government is the bad guys mm. And so whenever something to the theory is, whenever you see bad stuff, abductions or weird bad experiences with UFOs, it's actually government pretending to be aliens. Right. They're trying, so to, that's give, one they're trying to give us a bad opinion of aliens so that we'll follow government if, if the aliens yeah, ever something. decide. Something. Well. It has its own branches, but basically. Yeah. But then okay. there's a different one where aliens are at least no better than us, maybe the bad guys. 
And so the government, what they're doing is actually reasonable and or moral good mm. because they're protecting us. Right. From the evil from aliens. Right. Interesting. So if you want to speak theories like UFO theories, then these are the theories. You take the same facts and you arrive at a different theory of what the conspiracy is. Right. Okay. I like that. That's so that yeah, that would definitely be an interesting branch of this whole site is to try to discuss these different theories broken down by paranormal activity, sightings, experiences, alien tech of any kinds that we actually have in our hands that this might have come from aliens. Some people say, you know, computers came from aliens, a nuclear bomb yeah, came exactly. from aliens. That's that's part of the reverse engineering uh, branch of the theory. Yeah. So it's it's definitely interesting to have that as a specific category. As far because as because then it. like the, it, like if you wanted to rate it like this one is again like pretty high on cultural significance so you want to make do uh, you do want to do a breakdown for this one because it's also pretty varied mm -hmm. and because like the certainties are very sparse in the in this field yeah. so what you would do is like there are a couple of a couple of sticking points that would have to get rated by the, the likelihood by some sort of expert and uh, the sticking points would be something like are aliens doing alien abductions. Mm, okay like one of them Objection. or because like then the, like is it uh, is it them or is it the government faking yeah. it or is it people just really being wrong about it are mm -hmm. the options yeah then other one does some government somewhere or do governments have some alien reverse engineered or given by aliens tech do they have right. it or not right 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 because sense. then there's like another one is then like this related to this did any governments have, or do they have official relations with aliens mm -hmm. in secret? Right. That would be a good question. Because questions. there's been a bunch of theories, especially like more theories than accounts in this case, that if like, like Eisenhower or, or somebody had meeting with aliens and that actually what's happening is partly what aliens want the governments to do. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so those, those are basically just three questions we could ask on the site and have everybody give their level of uh, percentage on what they whether they thought that was true or false or yeah, yeah, because of course the, the the first one the first one is are the ufos or uaps here is something here some kind of presence that's not human but looks intelligent but that's sort of a, we could, should also be there probably but that's very likely at this point yes that something's up because too many official two official people have acknowledged it lately mm -hmm. that something's going on yeah, first first contact would definitely change the world when that when that opens. Uh, it's a bit of a can of worms, that's for sure, as far as world society and this whole Invictus uh, way of thinking, how it would change society, fracture us off into so many different factions. Yeah, um, and like if you if you don't do the alien disclosure right, then you're sh making sure that this is going to happen. That you will yeah. have variously covert, covert, variously open movements with very different goals, fighting each other to accomplish different ends. Interesting. OK, we we'll definitely need a whole section for just that kind of thing. Uh, all right, let's jump back into it. So I think we're, we're getting we're getting somewhere. We're getting to the point where it's becoming clearer to me how we can kind of try to talk about these things and get other people, get our truth tellers to kind of rate these things. That's really what we're trying to kind of yeah, because zero like, What you need to do is that as a good categorization and unbiased way of of, of uh making sense of it uh, and wikipedia is wikipedia is not doing that no no we're trying we're trying to we're trying to take this list from wikipedia and do it in a better unbiased way that's easy for anyone in the world who we agree is a truth teller uh unbiased truth teller to go and rate these these types of things that's that's what we're looking for so I think like ultimately, because ultimately what you need to do is to get some sense of, okay, what is reality? Like what things are really happening with what likelihood? And with something like the UFO, you can't be just saying it's all for sure hoaxes by the titles of the sections. You yeah. have to be like, okay, so what are the things that some people claim are true and other people don't believe are true in reality and get those looked at, the, the key points of the various theories. Okay. All right. So those are three good questions we could definitely have and, and get answers to. All right. Let's uh, jump into medicine. I think this might be uh, one of All the right. big ones too. So this is definitely one that matters a lot. So we've got alternative mm -hmm. therapy suppressions, artificial diseases, COVID-19, mm -hmm. of course, a big one. Florida mm -hmm. Florida fluoridation. What's that one? Oh, that's the water fluoridation. Fluoride in water. Fluoride in water. Coming people down. 
to prevent tooth decay, but it actually just makes us dumber and easier to control. It's interesting because I don't think they do it here in this part of the world, in mm -hmm. my country and stuff. And yeah. we don't have problems with teeth. We like don't need it. Interesting. So this yeah, we... this one has been a bit bit like odd to me because it seems to be a way to accomplish people having better teeth. Like mm -hmm. that, the scientific part of it working on the teeth is factual. Hmm. It's just uh, interesting. Like, yeah. like for, for me, because I really don't have any personal experience or stake in this. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Let's just, uh, thing, I'm not even like my whole life, I'm not even using a fluoridated toothpaste. Really? I'm using one of those rare ones which work on a different principle, like some sort okay. of clove oil, antibiotic, organic thing. Interesting. You've been using that most of your life and, and yeah. you haven't had. And, and I have had excellent teeth. <laughs> That's great. Now, my and my family uh, has been pretty bad on the teeth teeth front. We definitely uh, have, have have had trouble getting all our kids to brush, uh, you know, as often as they should, and and uh, we've had a lot of cavities because of it. So it's definitely even though even with the fluoridation in the water, right? So it really comes down to better hygiene and I think much more. Well, so maybe genetics actually is mm. sort of the sense I'm getting the more I'm looking into it. Okay. That like I, me, myself, personally, my teeth, even I had like periods of time when I wasn't necessarily focused on, on brushing too much and it didn't really affect the teeth. Hmm. I think really? there's some issue with like, uh, what's it called? Uh, microflora in the cavity. Interesting. That, that, that can like, because like ultimately what you need is for your body to be fighting off the bacteria. Hmm. So no, however, that, at least that's like the most effective way that the body can deal with it. Like all of these flor fluoride and stuff like that is like a supplemental solution that uh, sort of hacks the the situation independent of what the body is doing. Yeah, and some people might argue that if, if you hack it too much and then take away the hack, then the body's not developing its natural immunity to it as much, right? Like there's there's a, there's some like, because that has been a development, like that's interesting, like because I'm talking about fluoridation precisely because we probably don't disagree on vaccination actually being effective and uh, yeah. that there was a lot of bullshit with it, especially with COVID. And that it, that's, that's an important question. Fluoridation, I think, is more sort of debatable or mm. interesting to be debated because there's lower stakes. It's not like killing people, probably. Mm. And uh, But at the same time, you really can accomplish the same effect in different ways. Yeah. And that, that also fits in with the mouthwash um, industry, right? That, I, that's actually what I wanted to say because myself. my doctor specifically told me that has been something interesting also because that's a part of science, medical science, that did experience some evolution lately because they weren't quite sure or didn't quite understand the microbiomes like a while back. Right. In, like a nose, they, in the nose, in the ears, in the mouth. And uh, something like mouthwash is something that my doctor that's a specialist on these things uh, specifically told me to not use because yeah. you don't want to just sterilize your your mouth yeah and my dentist just told me a couple of weeks ago that i should be using mouthwash daily and i was like i don't know about that i've never used it before and i don't think i should be using it daily but but they told me straight up oh you should be using well, it daily we recommend you, that that's a good conspiracy point do you know yeah. what my conspiracy theory here is the, the the dentists are just being paid a certain amount to to, to commercial pawn off mouthwash. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's definitely one that you know maybe it's not a, like you said as life or death, but it's definitely a business one. It's monetary yeah. you know gains. They're they're pawning off this maybe useless thing that's not necessarily good for you. It might well, even like, be bad like, for like, you. Seriously, my doctor, who's like a renowned specialist in my area, specifically told me to never use it. Okay, <laughs> and there you go. Yeah, that's interesting. So I, I I haven't used it, never have. Um, but uh, it's interesting that it's actually a negative thing when they've been selling you on it for so long. Do you do you know what he did recommend to me lately as a, like a new thing? Because I had some issues with uh, ear infection, no, uh, like uh, chronic uh, over a long period of time, and uh, that doesn't happen very often. Actually, he said like he had like three patients total with that. Uh, so it's not entirely clear how to deal with it because. Uh, in their science, they have figured out ways how to deal with acute infections pretty well. Hmm. But the chronic ones are a problem because you can't be just disinfecting the ear all the time. Right. That, that's just not that's not going to allow the natural biome to return there, which is the thing that can keep it stable. 
Right. So that's like with the mind mouthwash. So he recommended because recently it's a thing that actually used to be alternative medicine because uh, it, there wasn't a commercially viable way to produce it large scale. It was you're using uh, what's it called? Colloidal uh, molecules, uh, colloidal silver or, or colloidal copper. And what mm -hmm. that is, do you know what that is? No, I have no idea. Never, never heard of that. That's a, an ancient form, actually. It's like ancient and alternative uh, form of disinfecting something, which is uh, very sort of careful and very is well tolerated by human body because that's uh, pretty much uh, free radical particles of uh, silver or gold, but gold would be more expensive, or copper, like the sort of why it was actually was healthy to drink out of golden cups hmm. because those par particles of the metal are destroying, like ripping, ripping off the membranes of the of the bacteria and not nice stuff. Hmm. And that's uh, that's, a, that's actually scientifically proven mechanism. The problem was that uh, he, people had to very expensively be home making it because it wasn't stable. The chemical, the, the yeah. molecular form of it, wasn't stable over time. So the, recently, I guess somebody commercially stabilized it, hmm. and so they started selling drops with it. And uh, it's so super safe that you can, like, for normal human cells. Wow. That, that's really not an issue at all. Like, you can use it in the eyes, in, in uh, like, the nasal cavity, in the ears, or whatever. And uh, what it's supposed to do is, like, if you, it sort of slightly sort of disinfects, and, but mostly really only the bad stuff over a long period of time, hmm. is what it does in a low concentration. And it really helps. And he recommended it to me because it's like, yeah, I know it's been like an alternative thing for a while, but I've already had several patients who started using it when nothing else worked, and it helped them all. Wow. What's it called? Uh, colloidal silver. Oh, how do you spell it? Two L's, I think. Let me check. Colloidal silver. Never heard of it. That's really interesting. And that's like an interesting example of like, a, yes, with two L's, O-I-D-A-L. O-I-D-A-L. And uh, yeah, the, thing, the thing is, that's like an example that like this is a specific example, not of a conspiracy theory at all oh, yeah, just... of, of how like if you're just going with medical propaganda of like everything alternative is bad because and the line is alternative medicine, if it worked, wouldn't be called alternative medicine. It would just be called medicine. <laughs> right. Which is very funny. It's yeah. like a really funny line. But it's a propagandistic reduction of reality yeah. because it yeah. sort of assumes that the ancient peoples, many of the traditional alternative approaches are basically what people in ancient times did and sort of flatly assumes that they've been wrong about everything. Yeah. yeah but it, but it, they really, really weren't wrong about everything. It's kind of saying you have established medicine, right, which is the mainstream medicine, MM, MM, <laughs> MM, MSM, mainstream medicine. Um, and then you have like alternative which is not mainstream but it doesn't mean that it's any less effective necessarily it just means necessarily the mainstream oftentimes is less effective yeah oftentimes it can be but it basically just means that the mainstream hasn't accepted it yet and that's why it's alternative um so the main the main body of, of doctors in the world has not accepted it as as normal yeah. acceptable so, so that's why I, this is a great example case example case study is like when you can be recommended mouthwash which is a commercial nonsense bullshit yeah, by your doctor, and yeah. uh, and it which would probably harm you. I'm pretty sure. And I'm recommended uh, used to be alternative thing by my doctor, which turns out actually is helpful. Yeah, and that's so that's a, that's a whole list of you know medical conspiracies as well. Where how much can we actually trust our doctors? And you know the vaccination is of course a huge part of that. Where most of us agree that a certain level of vaccination is good. But but now because of these other things like the mouthwash, people don't trust their doctors as much. So yeah, they specifically because of the vaccine. commercial interference. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're always worried that someone's going to invent some vaccine that really doesn't do anything. Um, and they're just making trillions of dollars off it because they've convinced the medical community or paid the medical community. The pain, the painkillers was a huge part of that. The oxytocin yep. uh, epidemic. You know, yep. where the doctors were essentially bought out by the drug companies to pawn these things off on anybody with a minor amount of pain. And, you know, what they were really doing was creating drug addicts uh, and, and legalizing, you know, um, morphine and marrow and uh, what's it, what was it, cocaine, I think, uh, yep. and oxytocin. So they're just basically trying to find ways to legalize uh, drugs, essentially. And, and, and well, like get fentanyl. It's, it's just fentanyl. you're making it more and more and more potent. 
Yeah, yeah, they're just really getting these artificially created drugs to be acceptable by the medical community. And, and mo mo most importantly, it is really through bribes and to make more money. It really yeah. do is, doesn't offer like added benefits for yeah. most people. Yeah, because I true. think the main issue is the, the problem isn't in capitalism that you have companies who make money inventing new chemicals, but basically new treatments. That's good, potentially. The problem is when it bleeds through into prescriptions that there's a pressure or bribes to doctors to make wrong prescriptions right uh, they're basically giving the doctors you know huge trips or or just perks of some kind just to learn Four about times. this particular drug and then all of a sudden you know they, they might maybe uh, there's some cutbacks you know maybe there's illegal cutbacks uh where they prescribe I, a certain I'm thing sorry. uh but just you're also typing it wrong now it's uh prescriptions you're right <laughs> prescriptions Thank this you. Is my grammar Nazi brain. Uh, uh, anyway, but so what I would say, like, this is a very important section because this is very. If it's if you feel mistaken about this, it's very harmful, yeah. and uh, there's it's more business problem than political problem most of the time. Yeah. And so the crazier conspiracies against medicine are those who are very politically oriented. Usually, the ones that criticize the business side of it are much more reasonable. Usually. Yeah, there's a lot more truth there. And a lot of good documentaries on this too. That you know, the the dope sick was a really good uh, show. That was a documentary on the oxytocin epidemic, and it was mm -hmm. based on on real life facts. You know, they had some. Uh, what was the guy? Uh, Tom Hanks was one of the main guys in that. Uh, a very very good documentary. Them. It kind of oh. got got you into you know the actual people. He played a specific doctor that was one of the main guys in that whole uh, epidemic. And you know, it, it it was something that we learned a lot from. You know, and ho hopefully we can kind of prevent that with this whole fentanyl thing. And, yeah, no, and like, like my, my main issue is, I think this is an area where making a nuanced, actually informed and uh, correct site about what what's what here could be very helpful. Because I think the one of the main failings of skeptical community and the scientific medical community lately was the communication, because they sort of decided for political reasons they're not going to trust people to understand the nuance in the science or they built propagandistically pretty much prevented them from making what they saw as inconvenient choices including like uh telling especially things like telling people oh the masks won't help you at all and like for stated purpose of uh we didn't want the, to like for the doctors the masks to run out right 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 that's right. clear white propaganda that's, that's like clear white propaganda you're completely lying in this case yeah. to achieve what you think is a greater public good yeah keeping the doctors safe so that they can help more people right if the doctors yeah. all get sick and die then we're all screwed <laughs> but but it's still screwed up yeah it absolutely interesting yeah no this this medicine one's uh, a key one we'll have to kind of dig deep but okay i think we've got a pretty good pretty good baseline anyway for all these different categories i'll have to kind of think it through talking through i'll i'll uh, Kind of watch it through. Is there anything else we want to add? Any other categories we're missing? So we got science and technology. Well, let's, let's, let's look at the other ones. Science Go and technology, through. I think we've already talked a lot about in other episodes. Yes, we kind of covered that. The whole flat earth one we, we mentioned a little bit yeah. last time. Uh, you know, global warming is definitely a huge one. We'll definitely have all that there. Okay. Weaponry, you know, all RFID chips, all that stuff. I That's... think like the some some more out there would be something like technology suppression and stuff. But that, that there, with, with the science, there will be some bleed through into UFO reality. Yeah, yeah, and moon landing, fake and stuff like that, tech, tech suppression. But but specifically, moon landing is also a good case study because I don't think uh, show show me please a page for moon landing on Wikipedia. Uh sure. Where was it here? Uh, outer space. It was part of outer space here. Okay um so let's see yeah the u.s moon landings were staged by nasa and a film studio the most prolific theories allege uh some alleging development so again it kind of leads to other sites you click on it and it goes to other places moon and, and they are theory, mentioning right? ufo one there is a right right behind that is the uh if you will go back yeah uh, there was the mckinnon uh secret fleet or is that uh... hacker gary mckinnon a more recent theory emergent following the activities of hacker gary mckinnon suggests that right. a secret program of crude space fleets exist right 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 so Supposing it immediately that. goes into ufo stuff yeah yeah then that that's where ufos uh, all come from is the secret secret program of crude space interesting yeah, but, but that shows you so so now please show the one that is there one specifically for moon landing then yeah, there's a whole site for moon landing. So you can okay. go in here, so, moon landing conspiracy uh, theories. So it, it, these are a whole bunch of different ones that kind of go into right. details. And so on. 
all the different let's look at the number of conspiracies involved uh hoax claims and rebuttals and under it is number of conspiracies uh not not this one yeah let's go back uh number of conspiracies involved under hoax claims and rebuttals yeah let's take a look According to the conspiracy, it's impossible yeah. because the size and complexity. It would have to involve more than four hundred thousand people. <laughs> You're right about that one. Oh, that's, that's a conspiracy. that's a different thing. Yeah, that's just the basic argument of how to spot that it's a fake. It, yeah, that, uh, that it's not a conspiracy because you'd have to have way too many people involved and right. one leap. You know, with, with anybody, uh, any kind of whistleblower there would definitely. Uh, uh, have... Could you please scroll down the page? Like, what what are they covering? As, because these are just like very specific factoids that are disputed. Yeah. Yeah, NASA. Yeah, that's just the yeah. evidence going through the evidence. Okay. Yeah, the evidence of the moon landing. Yeah, because that's also not not enough. Like, there's not just different pieces of evidence for one theory. There are multiple different variations of the theory. Because yeah. again, I think Wikipedia has a real trouble distinguishing between facts and theories. Interesting. Because yeah, like the theory, the theories are, for instance, like this. The there's a like that they filmed it in the studio on Earth is uh one version like uh, it is the popular one sure but then if you already are like they also mentioned mckinnon and the ufo stuff then there's uh the best ufo version actually of the theory best by best i mean include uh, less people who would have to lie and like best by all the metrics hmm. is uh, like the least unbelievable or i guess most believable is that in re in reality they did go there but also they filmed some fake footage just in case something went wrong. It didn't make it. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe <laughs> some just in case. So it's like it wasn't that they didn't actually go there. They did go there, but also just in case they filmed some shots. Maybe so. Maybe some shots could be fake, but most of it would be true. So that's one mm -hmm. thing. And uh, at the same time, the reason for that, why well, some shot would be fake, would be to cover up that actually the one thing that some astronauts were talking about. Uh, were and sort of plays into weird facts like uh just like invest like for instance research the general just attitude by of of uh, of uh, Armstrong after he returned back hmm. there was some something like wrong about just like the feeling and attitude after doing something so successful yeah uh, he didn't want to do interviews and stuff so it's like that's a sort of like playing into those things and that was that the astronauts saw some UFOs either on the way or on the moon during the mission mm. right and sort of realized for themselves that we're not actually alone in space or the most advanced thing in space right right and you think if, if, if there was there that they would have uh, prepped them for it beforehand but maybe not maybe <laughs> that's the maybe they concept. didn't really know i, I that's the that, that, there's some open things to the theory but like if you wanted to be fair in the analysis then you wouldn't go after the dumbest thing that you can definitely disprove you would have to go against Steelman, against the smartest version of the theory. Right. Oh, wow. But, but again, that's like one of the things where it makes sense, like moon landing is one of those where you, it does make sense to make a breakthrough of like, okay, so which specific, specific factual points are we disputing here? Right. What one of them is like, happened? did they go at all? Like, how likely is that? Hmm. Yeah. Did, is some of the footage fake? How likely is that? Or yeah. did they see aliens along the way? How likely is that? <laughs> How likely is that? Oh, there's so many different questions to ask with even just that one. Yeah. Definitely, I think that one is definitely one of the top 10, though, as far as uh, importance and like the fact that it matters. It does matter. Just the same reason all the UFO things matter. It matters because the government, you know, you want to trust your government. If you can't trust them to, you know, be honest about the moon landing, how can you trust them to be honest about anything? It's one of the biggest because, events. Like, sure, because there's a difference between, for instance, American government of that time and Soviet government. And that's why there's actually skeptics are much more likely to believe that there were people in space before Gagarin who died and were covered up. Hmm. If you want to talk, talk like a space program conspiracy. Right. Hmm. So the level to which you trust the government does affect the assessment. Of right. Probability. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So then we talked about science. We talked about space, UFOs, sports is definitely one of the ones that I'm least concerned of. Let's, let's take a yeah. quick look. I don't really care to be honest. I'm well, not. What is that about Ronaldo? 
um, Ronaldo in the World Cup. Oh, that was the one uh, initially moved from the starting lineup 72 minutes before the match. Reinstated by Brazil, because coach. Sleepwalk through the final, France winning the game. Hmm. Yeah, so there's basically just a lot of them about, you know, different sports being fixed for different reasons. They definitely... Well, just, duh. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, Monetary. <laughs> just like Ronaldo's, like, maybe not being super healthy is the cons great conspiracy there. Yeah, that he's been drinking too much or, or something. But, uh, you know, whether the level of truth there, whether it's propaganda, whether... I it's, think it's that the look at the game of those is like, that's... That's not really a, like a conspiracy, I guess. Somebody would be covered up information, but that's like if it's something that would make sense to publish only in like a TMZ or some other uh, tabloid, yeah, then I don't think that's important to talk. That's just noise. Yeah, and talking it, about it is a waste of time. Exactly. So I don't even think um, we. If anything, it's just a very very side note thing. I don't like, even know if we didn't do it at all. Sure. But but there would be a conspiracy involved. It's this kind of like sort of inane drivel that's being intentionally released to create noise pollution, yeah. information pollution on the internet. Yeah. So that stuff is something we want to uh, bear in mind. And, and also also these deaths of prominent figures like um Hitler didn't die and all those ones. Um I think that's there's a category. I think those fall into like a story. Because yeah. like those are not so much about facts, but about feelings and and then how cool something is as an idea. Yeah, even the one about Jesus Christ having offspring, the whole Da Vinci Code one, right? All, all yeah. these ones kind of fall. Like, literally, the like you you immediately in the same sentence mention the book. Yeah, that's fiction. Yeah, it's just yeah. they're just fictional ideas that that are just kind of fun, and I think most of these fall into mm -hmm. the category of fiction fun, high level of fiction fun, and they don't necessarily matter that much whether. Hitler is still surviving as a 150 year old man and on the moon somewhere. It's just yeah. highly, highly unlikely to be true, a point zero one percent, and you know, only created because it was kind of a fun thing that some random. And the, the the actual value of fiction slash fun or curiosity things is uh, theories is in uh, the speculative, in, uh, yeah. speculative value, meaning that the, con the contemplate does does the contemplation of the idea enhance your thinking. Right. Or give you more options in the future. Yeah, uh, exactly. And then, you know, what, what level does it matter? And what level does it, does it, like you said, what level does it broaden your horizons so that you can kind of be more open-minded and more. Because more I think like the, the main, the highest example of like highest value sort of conspiratorial fiction is uh, the work of Philip K. Dick generally. Like the uh, men in the high castle, like the alternate alternate histories, parallel universe kind of mm. concepts. Or he did a lot of in you know, the through a scanner darkly, uh, a lot of uh, analysis of like uh, cybernetic uh, manufactured realities. Interesting. So and he himself, there's an element of mystification there. It's a, a real conspiracy theory because he seemed to have believed it mm -hmm. on some level. Right. That in his life, for real, he was being followed by agents, which is even possibly true to some extent, because he was sort of a uh, political radical seen as a sort of dissident hmm. by the American government. And uh, so there's probably some truth to that, which contributed to a greater state of paranoia. But also he kept talking about his uh, uh, actual experiences, which were sort of for him, uh, like blurring the border borders between reality and fiction like he hmm. like really thought he met a person from an alternate reality or a time traveler because of what they said and what later happened and stuff interesting that kind of definitely gets into the paranormal you know scheme of things and, and the even anomalous your, experiences par par paranormal experiences um that definitely fits in there um what i was thinking though is even beyond that like uh whether or not we all live in the matrix you know, that's another fun one. That's uh, that's I guess science technology a, bit, a little bit, but, but also so. anomalous experiences. Yeah, and like y UFOs and, and or like uh, AI. AI is controlling the world or something like that. That that well, kind of alien in intelligence could be many different things. Yeah, AI exists or something. Skynet, whatever. Ideas is kind of something in addition to you know UFOs and science together. 
how it might be controlling our lives even as we speak that maybe that's the illuminati is just some ai bot maybe that's maybe that's god maybe god is just a super ai that's kind well, of controlling us you, you should then you should really uh look more into the the books uh, and films adaptations of the books of philip k dick because he's really doing a lot about that he did like he did a whole movie who was in the in it matt damon maybe uh adjustment bureau Oh, I, yes, I saw that one. That was good. I did like that one. Uh, what's that, the guy's that's... name? Philip K. Dick? Philip K. Dick. Uh, no, K. Okay, just, uh, no, no, no. It's just K as in letter. Uh, oh, okay. Philip K. And Dick. then last name? Dick. Dick? D I G? No, C K. Oh, C K. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's short for Richard. Okay. Philip K. Dick. And that's his last name? Yep. Oh, cool. All right. Some people have it. Yeah. Had it yeah. more earlier today, not so favorable. Uh, also, <laughs> it's not, uh, it's just Philip. Yeah, but it's just a space thing. Yeah, got it. I'll, I'll look him up. Now, Justin Burrow is definitely an interesting movie. So, that's kind of another level of paranormal activity, I think, that kind of fits in there with, uh, with our. It's sort of a, it's also very old. It's like a Plato's cave kind of thinking. Yeah. Matrix slash what is real? What is reality? And again, yeah, that's again, I think more fun than anything else, because I don't think it really matters whether we're in the matrix or not. From our perspective, we still yeah, that, that, that's very highly scoring in the fiction uh, mystification category. Yeah, fiction, fun, mystification kind of goes hand in hand. They're not necessarily that important as to whether or not it's true uh, as far as our decisions that we make. Our decisions don't change even if we're in the matrix, really, um, at, at that point. It's just kind of our level of uh, what we care about, I guess. All right, espionage, I think, kind of as well as a whole different category here. I think that more or less falls under government. Well, um, espionage, sure, but things. espionage is its own category in the realm of conspiracy theories because those are people paid for making them up. Yeah. Or doing them. Yeah. So it's it's hard to hard to have a category on that. Just you know, spies making up conspiracies. <laughs> yeah, well, that's like uh, yeah, like uh, what they're up to, right? That's like uh, MK Ultra. So it's secret projects. This is basically one of them, but that's going to overlap with anything potentially, especially UFOs or paranormal stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I don't think we necessarily need its own category for that one. Um, no, well, but... you need to probably have like a specific category. Like I've just, that's an interesting concept that I've lately encountered. Uh, people keep talking about, and it's very interesting because we talked about intelligence uh, agencies a little bit, I think in one of the podcasts. And, yep. or military military things and i think we were thinking about like what open source military would be right and uh or open source intelligence if that's if that's possible and mm. now it's happening do you know what open source intelligence is i know i, I know we talked about it before but you say it's, it's happening it's called it's something that's being done it's not you don't write it there it's not conspiracy yeah, at yeah, all. It's not conspiratorial. just making notes as we talk but yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. uh it's uh, ball, open man. source uh open source intelligence is it something now happening that's being called that and what it is is a bunch of people using the internet like from all over the world networking together who are independent who are not agency people or whatever with mm. a specific agency agenda who are analyzing the war in progress, gathering intelligence and sharing it with, with each other openly. That's cool. That's very similar to what we're trying to do with works, really. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's, it's very encouraging like, yeah. that, that you can do something like this because that's, that's awesome. well, maybe the right way to do intelligence. Yeah, I'll definitely have to look them up and, and see what I can do to roll in their ideas and maybe connect with somebody there. That would be great. Cool. No, I love that. That's awesome. Um, very neat. Okay. Because that's what that's what happens if you're Russia and you basically do something that's opposed by all ethical people everywhere. Right. Yeah, like 99% of ethical people agree that this particular thing is true. <laughs> is, is, yeah. So so in this case, it's just another term. You wanted to sort of ask at the, at the beginning something like if there are some uh, conspiracies that are trying to do some good. And uh, mm -hmm. I think there's a term for that from Babylon 5, when they try to, spoilers, pull off something like this, like the good guys doing something in secret. And they called it a conspiracy of light. Conspiracy of light, okay. That's, it's that's, like uh, the most white, of the whitest of white conspiracies. Yeah, that's what we're talking about here with the white, gray, and black. So the whitest ones, what's an example? What, we've got the vaccinations we talked about. What are some other examples of white conspiracies that you think? No. Generally, it would be something that uh, is well-intentioned, but uh, in the medical slash nutritional attached to national industry things. So, for instance, uh, 
that people should eat spinach. And how you know it's propaganda is that later they found out somebody made a calculation error and spinach didn't contain nearly as much as uh, of iron as they were claiming it does. Hmm. So they were wrong uh, about how great it is or to, for people to drink milk. Right. That's a good one. So those are basic ones. Like usually it's what the national government does, official, not hidden organization does it uh, in, in it. It's clear what they want you to do. They're not misleading you about the goal, uh, but they're just communicating in a way that's not strictly speaking lying. It's mm -hmm. just omitting facts that wouldn't that, that would make you maybe not want to do the thing that are also true. Yeah. So you, even the whole food pyramid has evolved quite a bit over yeah. the years, right? Where you're trying okay. to have all these different uh, amounts to be the the optimal health, right? So which it is more importantly, which it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, the carbohydrates which you're supposed to eat a lot of, uh, you're not really should eat. You don't. Sh you shouldn't eat that much of. Yeah. So I, it's interesting example of how like they thought they're doing the good thing. And so like uh, it's the sort of the uh, ends justify the means. But because they went about it in a propagandistic way, they didn't really super make sure they're right first. <laughs> yeah, That's, I think that definitely fits into medicine, too. Maybe I'll just throw that here. Just food, food recommendations. That's kind of an interesting one. Oh, that fits because in there. there's also like the industrial business bullshit element to it, like with the milk, yeah. like you have a milk industry. And so you have to convince people because it's easy to have it or something. And yeah. so you need to convince people to consume it or it would just go bankrupt. Right. And the sugar industry as well is is definitely a crazy thing that it's kind of getting some backlash now or it's everyone's kind of more anti sugar today than I think yeah. than we were we have been in the past. And, right? uh, but but that is more co scientific cause now. Uh, but do you know that, for instance, uh, America has like a strategic cheese stockpile? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned that before. That's pretty interesting. That um, yeah. So all these types of things, what we eat, you know, the type of medicine we should do. There's definitely a little bit and, of and the, with and the, re the religious one where it started. Right. That the you religion. want to save the souls of people. Right. That's the, the, the so motiv motivation them to fear hell. Yeah. Monetary political faith. So things with um, with white propaganda fit into the hmm, political health, the health, the health of your society. You're trying to help the health of your society, but you are not necessarily doing it correctly. You might not it's, actually it's know. It's definitely political that. in that whatever is necessary for the your polity, uh, your political state or society to yeah. function properly. Yeah, trying to with to, the to milk is your... like you can even you can even know that drinking or eating milk is like not the greatest thing, not the worst. It's fine, uh, but you want to present it as great because it creates a lot of jobs and people and the economy are better off with jobs, even if the jobs are kind of not necessary. Yeah. And the whole persistent fermentation thing that we talked about before will definitely, I think, help a lot of that. It'll, it'll be really interesting to see the number of propaganda around for or against this whole new new types of PF foods and how uh, how that evolves over the next decade. So we're, we're going to see a yeah, lot because, of that. Like, for instance, if our stated goal is to save the world, then we could definitely come to a conclusion that we should do some sort of white propaganda. I just don't think that's a great way to go about it because it's kind of has a tendency to kick you in the ass later. Yeah, uh, but uh, people with this kind of stated goal often would do it. Interesting. And that's a great point. I never really thought about us using white propaganda to save the world. If, it, if, it, if we ever had the power and influence to try to do it, like Elon Musk, for example, uses a fair bit of, I think, maybe white propaganda in his Twitter and, you know, just buying, buying Twitter and trying to make him seem like kind of the source of all good things, the source of truth. The could source be. Of could be. I just uh, there are many, very many people who are very skeptical of Elon Musk and everything he does. I think it's grayer. Yeah. It's not pure white. It's not Makes like uh, Gandalf the white, white. Yeah, that's a great point. It's a great point. Gandalf the gray. So no, it's definitely fun to, to look at it from those lenses, trying to see what is white, what is black, what is gray, and trying to categorize each of these things we talked about today in, in some form. So I'll see if I can create some kind of website that you know allows that. We'll start with some of the most important ones we talked about. I'll try to just kind of categorize them this way. Are there any other categories before we kind of wrap up for today uh, that you'd like to kind of add in here? I think we covered a pretty good, pretty good swath. I, I just, I just, like I said, I don't think aviation is a category. No, it's definitely, it's definitely at the very back. The, the black black helicopters either fall under some sort of a government thing or UFO thing. 
Yeah. Camp trails would be government slash science thing. Yes, uh, yes. And uh, specific mis uh, disappeared planes could be espionage yeah. angle or something. That makes sense to me. Yeah, you're kind of right. UFOs is really aviation even more than these guys are. Just yeah, from, <laughs> doing much more aviation. Than yeah, aviation. exactly. You get rid of that category. I like it. So uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm sure we'll talk about this again. This is just kind of a start. This was to get us going. Uh, this will definitely be a, a major part of our TruthWorks site. And going forward, we'll continue to make it better. I love any kind of feedback from any of our viewers that want to help us build this site on uh, you know, getting to the truth, getting to the actual truth behind any and all conspiracies as much as we can to get the truth tellers out there, sharing what is white, what is black, what is gray knowledge, and uh, trying to rate and categorize all these different things by level of importance and level of how it can help us save the world. That's what it comes down to. Um, great. I, I think this is great progress for today. I think this is a decent spot to kind of uh, wrap it up. Do you have any any final comments or anything you'd like to add, Martin, before we sign uh, up? Maybe you can stop sharing the screen now, I oh, guess. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. Back to the faces for the end. Hello. No, not not sure how, in how much of a rush you are, uh, but uh, just to, to, to sum it up. So like the, the terminology is pretty much uh, the gray, white, black, categorization that's what you will learn at school if you like me study propaganda uh to be great at it uh and then uh you the other cl classification with the genres and you're saying how much of it is a particular kind of story or or, or fact or whatever uh that's something that i specifically devised for my bachelor's thesis as a way to try to score them somehow i was specifically aiming at documentary movies so the sort of rating is always about a particular communication of it. It's uh, what it is genre wise. But I guess like other than that, we also agreed that we kind of have to rate them on importance and uh, potential level of damage that they can cause because uh, sometimes they can be important necessarily even if they don't have damages, uh, they can be important culturally. But uh, so it's not just the same thing really, but uh, of course, higher damage is increasing importance. And uh, so if we were, because you can't, the, the, like skeptics say, you can't really invest infinite amount of time into debunking every single thing that everybody has ever said. So we kind of have to cut something off as like really below our radar. And I guess we agreed that something like the sports category, I would say like a showbiz stuff or just celebrity gossip level conspiracies. I don't think uh, like who did what in which reality show. I don't think we really need to waste a lot of resources on that because that's not going to be really important to anything or at least to our stated goals yeah of trying to help save the world so importance and versus harm and then there are the various genres that it's a mix of every time and it's a question of factuality versus fun versus uh, manipulation uh versus uh some sort of i guess the mystification we could even maybe merge mystification and fiction it's sort of uh, difficult to distinguish them exactly. So mystification can think of as a genre of fiction yeah. in a way. I definitely like, it might be easier just to have three rather than the four as well. Because like, like when you say, the, when you say fiction fun, the fiction slash fun really covers it, including mystification. So, yeah. so basically fiction or fun versus the manipulation, which is a uh, key, definitely finding trait of all propaganda. And then you could also have some sort of, a, if it's propaganda to some extent, you can also look at the intention behind it because you can then interestingly show that uh, something that's well-intentioned could have had great harms or something that was with evil intention could have actually helped. That's not uh, necessary. That's like level of nuance that means actual education in, in the field. And then it's really about uh, focusing mainly on some of several of the key ones and uh, what are the points of contention because it's always uh with the big ones it's a branching tree of possibilities and there are like nodes in the tree which are like if this is true then rest follows and if the node is false you don't even have to care about what would follow from it so like with the ufo one there's like a at least four key nodes in those in those theories and it's really about establishing if you want to Focus your attention because one of the reasons why we would do this is to help people focus their attention on what actually matters in the world. And uh, if 
the sort of the, the panel of experts establishes that uh, within, for instance, the UFO field, if you want to explore or investigate that because you're curious, uh, establishes that of the like four main points of contention, maybe like one is vastly more likely than others, uh, or one is like super less likely than others, then maybe it doesn't make sense to put as much energy into that particular branch yeah. of the theory. Or if you're betting on some outcome, to bet like a lot of your own money or whatever on an outcome that requires that thing to be true. Interesting. Yeah, I think, again, the, the main goal of this particular exercise is to create, like you said, all these different categories, but more so to be able to create a, a method or a medium, I guess a medium of exchange so that truth tellers can answer these key questions about what's important you know, on what's true on these kind of broad, important, uh, contentious items that are out there in the world that, that might be causing conflict, causing people to be, you know, angry at their neighbor, angry at their friends and family because they can't decide what's true. So it just helps us to find a way to track, you know, and, and for people to share their ideas in a way that's not contentious and that's not uh, angry. And then you can maybe you have a truth teller that you love to follow the most and that you respect the most. And you can kind of go and see how he feels about each of these particular things and then maybe do more research based on that uh, to learn more. So I, I yeah, I, but like it, in terms of the medium, you can then make it interactive and handy for them because you can pre-construct the branches. It like doesn't really take the truth teller themselves necessarily to know what the possibilities are, like what are the different like mapping the theories. And so if you're looking at it as the person who's determining the, the probabilities, then it can tell like JFK assassination. It could be like step one, do you think that he was actually assassinated or not? <laughs> and then like we would see like the ratios of that. And if you like, go through, yes, he was, then we'll be like, and who do you think was of these existing theories is like how likely that was the culprit mm -hmm. behind it. And then if you like select, like, like sort of order them and stuff, and like there's one that's your right favorite or like the one that you think is most likely you go like level below and we'll be like so what's the evidence establishing this what are the things that have to be true in order for this particular culprit being the one and then you can go into more detail there it's like try to explain why this the evidence that it rests on is like particularly good or you can go do it for the worst least likely outcome and explain why it's particularly bad yeah. or then because then you can also visualize it Easily, you like like you can show the tree of like the branches with the possibilities of like the assessments on each node of, of, of the tree, and you actually get a picture mm -hmm. of what the discourse is. But it also in this way, if this is how you're visualizing it, then it's easy for the experts themselves to be using the interface to actually do the ratings and add comments. That's the important part. Yeah. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> so it's 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 a work in progress. It's going to continue to evolve as we as we uh, move forward with the TruthWorks site. Continue to get it better as far as having everyone have a specific login and specific security, and and then the whole process towards getting people again qualified as truth truth trailers. That will all evolve as we go. But this is, I think, definitely a very interesting and important part to start with as far as again whether we label it conspiracies or not, whether we say it theories, conspiracy theories. Oh, um, there are that's not actually contentious, uh, yeah. or it shouldn't be if you're not unbiasedly talking about it. Uh, the issue is there's just a difference between conspiracy by itself is the act of multiple people cooperating secretly towards something it could be nefarious by general definition, but something at least like secret that they did not disclose, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, misinterpreted intentionally in how it's presented. And conspiracy theory. Is a theory that some conspiracy happened. And so there's a distinction between just saying conspiracy and saying conspiracy theory, uh, which is clear. And in theory, uh, some scientists would nag that, like, what do you mean is hypothesis? Because it's not actually the theory, something, but that's a semantic nonsense <laughs> argument, whatever. It's, yeah. a, it's called a theory. We know what it, we mean by it. If we don't yeah. mean proven, we mean uh, maybe possible. So then what you're distinguishing, like with the UFO Wikipedia, you have to distinguish between just accounts or, or fact or facts or data points and theories because theories is like you have to take a bunch of data points like uh stuff that somebody claimed happened or some photographs or whatever the evidence let's say right. so you have to pieces of, of evidence 
you have to take them and arrange them into a narrative that explains their relative significance and what therefore actually happened. So you can't just say Roswell is a conspiracy theory without doing a lot of explanations. Like there's maybe something, if, if there was a group of people during the incident who co in secret cooperated to achieve a particular end that was misleading or manipulative, then you can say that's a Roswell conspiracy and I have a theory about this Roswell conspiracy. So we are Roswell conspiracy theory and then it's a thing. But uh, if they if you call it hoax, then it's just like evidence. Yeah, sure, the conspiracy could be to do the hoax, I guess. But uh, it's really that's not if you want to talk about let's talk about UFO conspiracy theories. That's really not what you should normal person would mean by it. What normal person would mean by it, it's like the high level. It's like uh, so there are some alleged events that are happened have, have happened. And various people have taken those alleged events and put them together into narratives. And I want to understand what those narratives are. And then I can look at if I like pick a narrative, like what is are the points that it rests on? And not that like there's sure there's some skeptic believing that they're saying or explaining that they're not true or whatever. But like, sure, it's a theory in a sense of like uh, I'm just looking at what would have to be true for that thing to be true. I don't have to immediately make a decision on whether the things that it requires 100% are true or not, if I want to think about these things or understand them. So because there's like a sort of different goal, like skeptics go into it with the goal of a uh, very biased goal of uh, making sure that nobody believes anything of it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, But that's not a great way to like educate about it hmm. because yeah. it, it's it's very very motivated like in a conspiratorial way or sort of being conspiratorial in how you're presenting it and that's yeah. just confusing the issue too much yeah that it's always that dividing line on what side of the fence you want to be on and which side you're trying to prove and we're really trying to get rid of that dividing line and just open it up to all ideas and let everyone say i think this is true i think this is false and and then let the world see that have it be open source open source intelligence of everything um so that's that's what we're that's what we're all about and i think we've made some really good steps today and kind of ca characterizing that and, and creating ways that we can evaluate what is true and what is not true yeah, or, or really anybody can like this is uh basically this was almost a lecture on like how to evaluate these things yeah and even that, just for yourself absolutely and that was definitely the goal for, for me and you to just talk it through so that anyone who watches this now or at any point in the future can kind of learn something on how to how to view truth how to view theories how to view conspiracies of all different kinds and how to um find their own truth in a better way yeah because because it's also way. hilariously this is actually the one thing that i'm an official academic expert at <laughs> and i have the credentials to prove it excellent that's <laughs> and it only took us about a year to get here with all the other all the other discussions we've had. I'm uh, I'm glad we that finally have an informed discussion of something. We finally we finally gotten deep into the meat and potatoes of what of what we're really all about and <laughs> what the saving the world, how we can save the world by uh, figuring out how do we how to evaluate conspiracies and 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 such like that. So it's all part of the same uh, progress plan together, uh, moving forward together. So thanks so much, everybody, for joining us today. We're really glad that you're able to, to if you're able to sit through it and and be excited about these kinds of things like we are. Uh, thanks so much for being a part of the discussion. And please connect with us sometime. Let us know how we can better do these these podcasts and better get this information out to people in a way that's interesting, entertaining, and uh, informative. Um, and help us to learn from all these things so that we can make the world a better place, save the world together. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Martin, and um, we'll see you next time. Let's save the world together. Thanks, everybody.